In this section, we are going to talk about using the CLI to access, configure and manage FortiGate devices. So first of all, what are the options? Well, you can connect locally with a console cable and this means basically connecting your PC or Mac directly to FortiGate console port. The other option is to remotely connect to, to the FortiGate through the network. And this means you will either use a Telnet on port 23 or SSH on port 22, these are the default values, to connect to the device. And this must be enabled in advance for connection to be successful. Remember what we said in a previous section that the box comes fully locked and you have to enable options and features as you go through configuration and enabling your device in the network. The other one is to go to HTTP and HTTPS like we have just discussed and then access the CLI from the web-based manager. It was, if you remember, in the right top corner, clicking there and the web base will just fire up a CLI connection for you. And locally you also have the opportunity to, to connect to the FortiGate as we have talked also with Forti Explorer, USB cable directly to FortiGate appliance. Now let's talk a little bit about permissions. So access profiles control the level of administrative access of every user or admin on the FortiGate. So once a user logs in, read, write or no access rights will be provided. The admin account that we have just used up to this point exists by default and it cannot be deleted. It makes sense as it would mean that you would be logged out, you would have no user password uh, pair to log into the device and do your job. Full permissions are associated with the admin account, similarly like the root administrator account on Linux or, or Unix platforms. New accounts that we can create are granted necessary admin access as per our configuration. So let's start first of all on configuring what's needed in order to remotely access, configure and manage your FortiGate device and then we're looking at the permissions section. In order to get started, first draw a little diagram so you can understand what I'll be doing. So I'll just take a new page and here is how it looks. So we have two FortiGates in our network now. We have the one that we have just configured and used to demo all the features and everything so this will be this will be the 40 xs and this one it's the 40 that we have moved to transparent mode at this point i have a connection between these two 40 gates and it's on port 3 port 3 as well I will just configure IP connectivity between the two. I will take 10.0.0.0 with dots slash 24 and let's say the 40 XAS course would be dot one and the 40 transparent it's dot two. After enabling IP connectivity and testing through ping and basically that is ICMP protocol I will just enable port 3 on 40 transparent 40 gate to permit let's say telnet although it's not recommended as everything it's uh, transmitted in plain text so information is not encrypted and then I also enable SSH and last just to test our connectivity I will just connect on the 40x XIS 40 gate and fire up an SSH connection so that I get access to the 40 transparent 40 gate. I am now logged in both in 40 gate, XAS course as said, and also in Fortinet transparent. So first of all, let's get CLI access. It's admin and admin. And let's see how the configuration looks on port three. Show system. show system interface port 3 good so nothing has been configured it's a default configuration let's configure it configure system interface 
edit port 3, set IP 10.0.0.1 slash 24, exit and save the configuration. So we have admin, no password, show system interface port 3, basic default configuration, configure system interface, edit port 3, set IP 10.0.0.2 slash 24 mask and let's say that's it show system interface port 3 great on this side show system interface port 3 we have 10.0.0.1 and on the other one 10.0.0.2 let's see if we have pin connectivity no sorry execute pin 10.0.0.2 it seems that is not working so got icmp code 3 destination unreachable now why is that it's because on 4.3 we haven't enabled any ICMP or PIN connectivity. So let's do that. Config system interface edit port 3 set allow access ping hit ping again still not working now why is that? Let's allow ICMP on this side as well, of course. So show system interface port 3. We haven't allowed it. Configure system interface. Edit port 3. So basically at this point, packets were going to the other 40 gate, were coming back, but they were rejected by this 40 gate. So we have to allow ICMP connectivity on this port as well. Edit or 3 set allow access ping exit and save execute ping 10.0.0.2 now we hit end it means that the configuration has been applied so let's see now okay so now we have connectivity between the two devices control C if you want to stop it so stop the ping before it's uh, it's going to send by default five packets so now that we have connectivity we can try execute SSH so we can try to SSH or telnet to the other device Again, it will not work as this port is not permitting is not permitting anything else but ping, so ICMP. So let's configure it now. So append, allow access, telnet and SSH. And to exit and apply configuration. So execute SSH on what device? 10.0. First of all, SSH to 10.0.0.2. Now we have a new host name, 40 gate VM64. And as you can see, it was 48 XAX course. So we have successfully <coughs> executed a remote connection to the other 40 gate. Let's exit. So connection to 10.0.0.2 is closed. This is how easy it is to connect to a 40 gate device remotely. So you don't have to be exactly near the device to administer and configure. You can connect remotely through Telnet and SSH. And again, the SSH is the preferred way because the traffic between the devices is encrypted.
Okay, so we are now back in the graphical user interface, admin and admin, or credentials, and login. So, I was saying a little bit earlier about the access profiles, what they are and why should we use them. So, access profiles control the level of administrative access of every user admin or admin on the FortiGate. So, let's create another profile and another user and test it if it will have the same level of rights. I will do basically an access profile that will deny configuration and only permit read access. So let's go to system, admin profiles and create a new one. The name will be read only, read only profile and let's say that it will have only read-only writes when it successfully connects to the FortiGate appliance. Hit OK. Now we're going to administrators, create a new one. So the admin is the default one. I'll create RO read-only admin, the same for password RO admin it's a local user administrator profile so this is the read only profile to match the user and the profile this is the place and hit ok good let's see how things look when we just connect with the read only one so log out and now we say ro admin ro admin We have now connected with the read-only administrator. Let's go into network, interfaces, and let's say we want to edit this port. No, we have selected and we don't have the edit option. Double click on it. Well, we can see the options here, but the edit interface is not available. The edit interface option. Can we put an alias? We can, but we don't have the OK. We cannot save our options. So hit return and that's it. We we'll log in with the root user, the admin, just to test again. Network, interfaces, port 4, we have the edit option available. 